hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel in this video i'm going to show you how i deploy an elastic beanstalk to host my website on wordpress first we have to create all the dependencies such as vpc subnet internet gateway routing tables a wordpress website needs a database to work which means we will need to create an ods during the creation of the beanstalk resources we will also need an elastic load balancer. Those resources will need to be on a multiple AZ, which means multiple data centers. That is why we're supposed to create multiple subnet on multiple AZ during the creation of our VPC. Let's go ahead to create our network, which is the VPC, with all the dependencies. To create our VPC, we have to go to the console of Amazon and to the search bar, we type VPC. And we click on VPC. And now we go to create VPC. So we have two options there. We have VPC only. That means we will only create the VPC. But Amazon gives you now the possibility to create, to generate all, all the dependencies that uh, the VPC will need to work. For example, it will create the VPC, the subnet, the routing tables, and the network connection, which is Internet Gateway and uh, VPCs like uh, S2 Bucket and Print. So let's go ahead and create our VPC. We have to give a name to the VPC that will be like uh, Beanstalk. Let's go Beanstalk. And we have to choose for a subnet. Let's keep that, okay? And uh, we have to go to the number of availability zone. Okay, so uh, let's give it three, okay? Let's customize the, the AZ, but uh, we can left like uh, US is one A, one B, and one C. No problem with this. And uh, number of private subnet, okay? We just need uh, three private subnet, for example, and three public subnet, okay? And uh, let's customize the subnet block, okay? Instead of 20, let's put 24 for all this. 24. Okay. So NAT gateway, so we need the NAT gateway because the NAT, the NAT gateway will help um, with the help of the NAT gateway, the private subnet will be able to go outside to, to, to have access to the internet. Okay, so let's choose one AZ in one AZ. Okay, and after that we don't need VPC endpoint, it's a known. And we can check and we will see that we have a NAT gateway, we have an internet gateway. So the NAT gateway, it's for the private subnet to go outside, and uh, the public subnet will go outside with the help of the internet gateway. So let's create VPC. Okay, so our VPC is being created. Let's wait a little bit for the NAT gateway. Okay, so our VPC is created. As you can see, we have Beanstalk VPC. So let's click on that VPC and see. Okay, so we have this VPC and let's go and check the subnets. Okay, so we have a Beanstalk subnet, like a Beanstalk private public subnet. All the subnet are created on multi AZ routing table. Okay, we have a beanstalk routing table for the public. So we have three subnet there. Let's go and check the internet gateway. So we have beanstalk internet gateway. So all the dependencies are now created. So let's go ahead and create our beanstalk service. Okay, so to start with the creation of the beanstalk, we have to do the same. Let's go to the search bar and type beanstalk. 
and we have elastic beanstalk we click on it and uh, we have to go and create application let's create application we have to put we have to give an application name so let's give for example um, WordPress because we will use WordPress we will deploy for WordPress okay and uh, the key we don't need key platform for a WordPress we need a PHP so we will have a multiple platform there we have that net we have docker we have go java node.js php python so let's choose php okay so uh, we have multiple version but we have some depreciate version but uh, let's choose for example uh, the last version uh okay we choose the last version of php which is uh, the recommended version and uh, the platform version is 3.5 but for you it can be in, in, in another one it's depend when you are watching this video and uh, for application we'll choose simple application but we can upload our code there or we can upload our code from an NSU bucket okay but uh, let's uh, keep it as as it is which is a simple application okay but something we have to to check and uh, because we have two options there we can create application and we can configure more option so if we choose create application it will create it will it will create the application for you it will create the beanstalk but there is a multiple things that uh, you will not have when we click on more option we'll have more option more configuration to change so uh, for presets let's choose custom configuration platform we don't need to change anything on platform we don't need to change anything on software for instances we can edit instances and just choose the the security group okay so we don't need to change anything else so uh, save okay and uh, capacity so this is the most important part so uh, let's edit this and go and auto scaling so auto scaling also we have to choose environment type which is a load balance okay so uh, that's mean it will create a load balancer but uh, if you don't need a load balancer or if you don't have a budget for this type of uh, architecture we can you can only choose for example a single instance when you choose single instance you will see those configuration are disabled but in my case i will choose a load balance okay so the minimum capacity will be one and the maximum capacity will be two okay so uh, the fleet composition will be on demand Okay, for the pricing and uh, we left this as it is and after that we'll choose uh, the instance type okay so uh, the best practice is to choose uh, very um, multiple type of instances okay so we have a t2 micro and t2 small so let's choose for example uh, t2 nano a t3 nano and m1 m1 large so we have uh, four type of ec2 instance so uh, AMI ID so this is the AMI that AWS uh, will give us okay so um, the zone we can choose any any two okay and after that the placement so where we will where we will place our our instances so let's choose one in one uh, one A one C one E F okay so we have four so the scaling trigger so the scaling trigger will be when or all the auto scaling will be will be will be execute so uh, let's choose for example cpu ut utilization okay and uh, for average as it is unit it can be by second or no by person percentage okay and uh, after that we have to change those for example we put this as 10 percent the upper can be for example 50 percent let's say like this and uh, the lower threshold 10 okay and after that we save so that was for capacity for monitoring okay we can 
we don't need monitoring so let's see oh okay so let's let this as it is load balancer let's change the load balancer type for example it can be an applicate in application load balancer okay we choose the port we choose the process so that is th that is for the health check okay we don't need walls and uh, we don't need log also so let's save and uh, walling update so this is important but we'll just keep this we we'll just leave as it is for security we need a key pair so let's edit and maybe have a key pair there so let's see yes i have a key pair name app lab just save it okay notification let's put my email For the network so this network you say this environment this environment is not part of a vpc so uh, let's choose because this is important so we choose all the az all the subnet okay instant subnet we need a public ip and we choose all this so this is for the database okay and this is uh, for the sub but uh, we can uh, select for example for database we can select only one two three okay and after that for the database engine we have to choose okay for the database engine we have to choose MySQL database and as a T2 micro the storage can be okay 5 gig and um, the password so the username and password so let's put the username and the password okay and after that we save okay so that's all okay so for the audience we have some we have some uh, running there an application load balancer must must have subnet selected at least in at least one two availability zone configure load balancer but i'm sure that we have this yeah oh load balancer subnet is known so let's edit this for database we have to check again so this is the most tricky part because if we're not choose if we're not choose all those things so uh, our beanstalk will fail during the creation save okay we don't have any warning now now we can go and create our app okay so our application is being created so let's wait and we will have all those things ready to use okay so we have our application created so uh, the application name that I put is WordPress and we have the environment which is WordPress okay so the same name and uh, let's click on environment to check okay so uh, our environment is healthy and uh, as we can see we have a name okay so we have an input here so let's click on that input to see if we can access our beanstalk service yes congratulations our beanstalk is being created okay so now the next step is to upload the wordpress uh, the wordpress uh, the wordpress package okay so i already download my wordpress package on wordpress.com so let's go and uh, upload this this uh this application package okay so we click on upload let me close that we click on upload and we choose the file okay and we go on download 
okay and we choose WordPress and we open it and we put a name for example WordPress hyphen six six dot zero dot two and uh, we left all those things as it is and uh, we deploy so by doing deploy by clicking on deploy it will deploy our WordPress code okay so our code was uploaded successfully we can make a refresh okay so now let's go back to our Beanstalk page and uh, refresh okay so we have a forbidden error okay so I'm going to show you how to fix this issue okay so to fix this issue we have to go to EC2 okay so the EC2 is uh, the server where our Beanstalk is uh, is deployed okay so we have one instance running let's click on it okay so this is our instance let's click that on that checkbox and we will have the IP address the public IP address and you remember I create uh, I create a pem file so this is the key name okay this is the key pair name okay so uh, <clears throat> the location of this we have to go on the location of this uh, pen file because we are going to log in with that pen file so let's say ssh i and the pen file is the pen file is nap lab that pen okay <clears throat> and after that we have to put the the username and now we have to put the public ip okay of the ec2 instance let's go back to the console and we click on on that to copy the public IP and now we go back and pass it there <coughs> so let's copy again okay so now enter yes okay so we are connected actually in the EC2 of the elastic beanstalk okay so let me show you how to fix that for Biden uh, issue so this error is because of the document root where WordPress is being uh, deployed so uh, for example <coughs> let me clear my screen let's let's go and check where we have uh, the the WordPress okay so we're going to cd var w and as we can see we don't have wordpress there so let's go on html okay so inside html we have the wordpress we have the the wordpress uh, folder okay so in this wordpress folder so what we have to do let me see where i am okay i'm on html so uh, let's move everything from wordpress okay to www.html okay okay so because of the permission so we have to go on to a sudo su okay let's clear again okay so ll okay so the thing is move wordpress everything inside to var www html okay yeah okay so actually i'm on so okay let's go back hmm. let's go and check www html okay so we have everything in HTML so now let's remove that WordPress folder LL okay so now let's go back to our website and check let me 
me see. Okay. Oh, great. So now everything is working fine. So uh, let's continue with the setup. Let's continue. Let's click continue. Okay, so what we will need? We will need the database name, database username, we will need the password, the host, all those things. So let's go and configure. Okay. Okay, so the name, the database name is EBDB. So it's like Elastic Beanstalk DB. Okay. So uh, this is the default database name that uh, Elastic Beanstalk uh, configure for us. So uh, let me put my username, admin. So uh, my password. And uh, let's go and check the database host. To check to to have our database host, we have to go on ODS because remember that we create an ODS. Let's put ODS there. Click on ODS. Okay, so let's click on databases okay so this is the only database that we have let's click on it okay so this is the endpoint of our database let's select this endpoint and put it on database host and the table prefix we left it as it is and submit all right so let's go for the installation one day installation uh let's put our the name let's say nap lab uh, for the username i always put like um something like uh, i don't know so one press you can just put admin for example okay so this is our password okay let me put my password on our block note Okay. and uh, my email so my email let's put naplab naplab cloud gmail.com and install our wordpress okay success and let's log in so now uh, let's go back to see if we have a different thing in uh, in our beanstalk name so this help is because of the load balancer because the load balancer was checking uh, the path but it didn't find anything because of the forbidden error so uh, we can check after and we will see this healthy so don't worry with this okay so let's click again and check okay so as we can see we have our wordpress ready to use okay if we want we can log in there admin and uh, let's copy our the same password that wordpress give us and click and login okay so now we can update we can install plugins so uh, our wordpress is ready to use okay so i think that's all for this session so to remove uh maybe after this you can uh, if you need for example to to if you need to delete this uh, beanstalk maybe and you don't need it so the only thing to do is go again and remove the application you can go there and click action and delete application once you delete the application, you will be able to delete our environment. So as you can see, the healthy is back to OK. So it's because the load balancing now is working fine. So thank you so much. Uh, if you need, if you have any question, you can put it in the comment and I will uh, I will give you an answer. If you need something like uh, something you didn't understand, I can make another video to explain you. Thank you so much. Goodbye.